Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be unboxing and installing this Kohler Karaf filtered water faucet model K18865VS. The VS in the model number stands for Vibrant Stainless. There's also a CP version which stands for Polished Chrome. So this is not a standard faucet for a couple of reasons. $1100 Canadian? That's crazy. I paid less than half of that, but still. This is a three-way faucet, meaning that there's hot and cold on one side, and on the other side there's a lever for filtered water. I'm curious to see how all this hooks up. In my case, the filtered water is coming from my reverse osmosis system here in my basement. The water flows from my dechlorinator into my water softener, up into my reverse osmosis system. Up above, I have the canister which holds the filtered water. Then there's a line that takes that water to my fridge and to my kitchen sink. So let's have a look inside and see what this faucet comes with. The purpose of me buying this faucet was because I didn't want to drill any additional holes into the, my granite countertop. I currently have three holes cut, but they are really close together and cramped. I didn't want to have anything else cramped in that location. And I also didn't want to have a secondary filtered water tap off to the side. I just want a very clean, simple setup, one faucet only. So we have some documentation, an install guide, homeowner's guide. I had a look at these documents online. They're fantastic, well written, great detail, great measurements. Hats off to Kohler for that quality. This unit is extremely heavy. I'd say it's about, about 15 pounds. And there are three lines, I'm assuming hot and cold. Hot and cold, and then the lever back and forth here for the filtered water. If you have a look into the end of the faucet, you can see there's a little hole there, and that's where the filtered water will come out. It also comes with washers and a threaded, threaded ring and a couple of screws. I'm also going to be installing this Kohler plate. And that is the plate to cover up the old holes in my granite. So there's two screws, two locking caps, plastic insert, and then a very carefully wrapped plate. This plate is also available in the polished chrome. This is the vibrant stainless. The recommended installation location of this faucet is in the corner of your sink, but as you'll see in a minute, if you like a unique look, it also works well as a center faucet. So let's go turn off the water main to the entire house. Drain out any water that might be left in your faucet. From underneath the sink, you're going to want to start uninstalling the old faucet, and this usually requires uh, removing a couple of screws. To disconnect the pipes, you may need a wrench to get it loosened up. Keep a towel handy since there will be leftover water in your faucet that's going to leak out. You should now be able to remove the old faucet and disconnect the spray hose. Once you have the area around the three holes cleaned up, fit the plastic base plate onto the two holes. No need to use plumber's putty here. Insert the included screws into the bottom of the plate and place it on over the base. From underneath the sink, screw in the two large plastic caps and occasionally check your progress from above. Feed the pipes from the new faucet into the center hole and lay the faucet in place. So this is why they recommend the faucet be installed in the corner. It has to be on a bit of an angle. I don't know if I like that and I don't know if I like this overhang. If the base is aligned so that the levers are the same distance from the sink, then a small gap appears right here on the left hand side. I don't know if I like that. So let's get it turned and uh, install it uh, on an angle. Place the fabric washer on first, followed by the metal one. On the threaded washer, insert the two screws until they reach the other side, but not all the way through. Slide everything up and screw on the threaded washer. Have someone on the other side keep things in place. Once it's secure, tighten the two screws on the threaded washer. I am removing the old connections to make way for the new ones. The pipe is half inch and the lines from the faucet are 3 eighths. If you are installing a valve here, make sure it says 3 eighths in order for this connection to work. If the new valves are closed, you can actually turn your water source back on and test for leaks. 
Go ahead and connect the lines under your sink. The code and filtered are labeled, but the hot is not. Use a couple of wrenches to make things nice and tight. Open all three valves and let's get this tested. The common complaint is the splashback, so let's give that a test. So let's have a final look at the install. I'm actually pretty impressed with it. The little lip here at the bottom doesn't bother me, and the little angle that is on, it looks pretty unique. Just need to learn now not to turn it on full when I'm actually uh, using the faucet. So uh, that concludes this video. If you like this setup, please give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see what else I'm up to, please subscribe.